The sixth session of the Africa Regional Platform for Disaster Risk Reduction, happening here in Balaclava, Mauritius, is for governments, development agencies, civil society organizations, academia, scientists, and even individuals who care about the losses of life, of property, and of development gains that arise from disasters. Now, we begin our coverage of this conference by asking, why disaster risk reduction? What exactly is this? Let me use the analogy in the, from the health sector. We learn through years and years of work that it's not a good idea to be responding to cholera or measles outbreaks. And we learned that we could step around that, how? In the case of measles, by giving measles immunizations. So that meant that the risk of measles never escalated to epidemic. Then having to spend a lot of effort in trying to mop up uh, an emergency, especially when it's cost lives and livelihoods. So, so disaster risk reduction is just the same principle, but applied to other kinds of threats as well. We can do a huge amount to prevent disaster losses. Africa is vulnerable, as you know. It's vulnerable to shocks coming from disaster, different disasters, and these of course are propagated by climate change, and climate change is on the increase. So the AU heads of state thought it better that they should come up with a continental framework which is going uh, to push forward the issues related to reducing disasters on the continent. Nothing brings context to this meeting than the food security situation in the continent. Up to 70 million people are currently at risk of starvation following a long spell of drought lasting almost two years. Made worse by a changing climate, the delegates at the meeting have a responsibility to come up with an action plan that puts the reduction of such risks at the heart of development. The huge loss of life, you know, 1.35 million lives over the last two decades globally from disasters and you know, over a trillion dollars, and it's an underestimate, of economic loss, which is money from disasters, which is money that could be spent on inoculating children, on health care and education, on economic development, on agricultural inputs. And so this huge cost that, and much of it is avoidable with disaster risk reduction and planning. So that's when the idea came into my head that this is really a, a, a tyranny of ignorance. It's not intentional, it's not as if government said we're deliberately going to ignore disaster risk. But it's still this ignorance which is now changing as a result of the Sendai framework, the, its predecessor, the Hyogo framework, and the commitment reflected here today of African countries to reduce disaster risk. That tyranny is ending and it will have a hugely positive impact on uh, people's lives and on economic development. You know, uh, we have been using rudimentary uh, practices. We have not been able to build resilience within the communities. Things must happen at the community level. Even if you have policies, even if you have actions and strategies, unless something happens at the community level, then we, are, then we can't really be happy that we have achieved. So we must build, see that the communities are able to build resilience. The Africa Regional Platform for Disaster Risk Reduction, convened every two years by the UN Office for Disaster Risk Reduction, UNISDR, and the African Union Commission, with the support of the regional economic blocs and a host country, is an experience-sharing platform where nations that have made significant progress in reducing the impacts of disasters talk about best practices that could be adopted by the rest. Countries need to sit by themselves, need to look at the historic data, they need to analyze and understand the data in terms of from the data to move from data that reports risks to risk information. Based on that information, they need to make uh, tough decisions that is to come with priorities on where they have to invest to reduce the risk that they face. Based on that, they will be able to mobilize resources to fund this transformation that needs to be changed, that uh, needs to happen at country, and this is the way of doing what we call mainstreaming of DRI into development. 
Two important documents are coming out of this meeting, one being the African Plan of Action for Disaster Risk Reduction, which defines approaches that governments can apply to reduce disaster losses. And the second is the Mauritius Declaration, which details the set of commitments agreed to by all the governments represented. It is an assurance to partners and peers of specific government actions which will be taken to aid the implementation of the action plan. In Mauritius, it's quite natural because we had so many issues where people are living in places that are prone uh, disaster areas and the government has the commitment to protect its people and one of these it is a sine qua non that we have to spend that money and even to go further we think that in the future we'll go up to 10 percent in, in the very close future so that we can really try to save the life of people preserve life of people's livelihoods then it's, it, it is it, it, it is it, it, important, like I said, in a country nowadays with the climatic change happening everywhere, we find it a necessity to do that. Part of the commitments is to put significant portion of annual budgets into risk reduction before disasters occur, as opposed to responding to emergencies.